In this video, I will imbue you with the knowledge to write tools code that can find assets within your Unity project in a couple of different ways. And we're gonna start basic and we're gonna move up in the world. So let's start by easing you into some nice safe fitting code before slapping you around the face with Unity's newish search code. It's not new, it's just nobody's bothered to use it really. So starting basic, here is a basic example. I have this character viewer. Now, yes, you can just write a selector and use the preview pane, but I have affiliate links to push later in the video, so we're gonna use this character viewer. Now, with this viewer, when it opens, it looks over the database, that's your project, and grabs a player character to display. The viewer code is not important to the theme of the video, we're just gonna delve right into the code that gets the character. Now, we use the editor class asset database and the method find assets. Now here, you might be tempted to pop in a search term like player character, because that's what you named your prefab. And if you're happy with that, best of luck in the future. But that assignment may change and renaming things all the time, it just isn't my style. So instead, I'm gonna mark our characters with the label character. Now, if you haven't used labels yet, then you're in for a treat. I will leave a link to a video in the description that will convince you to better well, better than this one to subscribe to this channel. Needless to say, they're a great way of marking metadata across your projects. Anyway, back to the hunt. In our method, we enter the search term we are looking for, and that's type prefab with the labels character and player. Now, this method will return all the matching assets in the form of their GUIDs. Usually at this point, I would send all those GUIDs into the viewer and then have the user on the tool swipe to change characters, etc. But I, I wanted to show how to load the asset from the GUID. So we're just gonna make the viewer use one character for the demo. So we check that something's actually returned and then we load the first asset in a slightly convoluted way. We get the asset path from the GUID and then we load the asset from the path. We will then assign that character to the character viewer. Now jumping back into Unity and opening the viewer, and there we go, we get a character. But it's not the one we wanted. Yes, it's another stinty character, but it's not the player character. It's just some random character. Now, some sharp developers amongst you that know how to use the find assets may have noticed a flaw in the search terms. It uses two labels. Now, I've seen forums talking about performing one search and then filtering the results for the second label, but trust me, that's not the way to go. Instead, here's a little magic trick for you. You can add a semicolon, and hey presto, we have a player character. You see, semicolons in this instance join search terms. Now, as you can see, find assets is a pretty quick method. It also will cache the second time around, so it gets even quicker. But to speed it up even further, we can also specify a folder to search within. And in this project, I know the player characters are all confined to the packages folder. So I can just add that as part of my search criteria. Now, that's a good way to get assets. But let's look at another method, a pro method. And we will do that straight after we thank the sponsor of this video, which is Unity. Right now, the asset store is having a sale with more than 300 assets, including many of the stinty assets you see in this video. The sale has 50% off with some flash deals starting at 70% and dropping as your FOMO takes the better of you to 60 and then to 50. So I will leave a link to the sale in the description and if you use it, you'll help support this channel and also obviously feed your assets to addiction. Now back into introducing Unity search service and I expect you might've stumbled on the search service before with the little search bars above the views like the project view. You see, I can use a similar query to our find assets, including that little semicolon to drill down to exactly what I want. Now, for those that don't watch my videos, I did a whole thing about not using the basic object browser from the object editor field, and instead using the search attribute to launch the window like a pro. It works really well. So make sure to watch it after this one. If you haven't already, I will leave a link in the description. Now, Let's delete our find code and we're gonna start over. First, we will be using the request method of the search service class, with the first argument being the search term. Similar to before, but I'll be adding a p colon to specify that this search is within the project. If you are unsure what your search term will be, you can simply create and copy from the search window, as you see me doing here. 
Now we will specify an action to be called when the search is completed. And we can inline what we want to do with the search results similar to before, but this time pulling the game object out of the search item that's found. Back into Unity and we can see this runs pretty much just as before. But one thing that should be noted is that the UI will actually appear before the search is completed, unlike the previous find assets method. This means your search could take a moment, you could still get the UI in front of the user and not halt any other operations. Now it should be noted that there is an alternative to this method, which is not to take all the results at once, but instead take them over many frames. Now, as this demo viewer only takes one character, it's not entirely relevant, but I wanted to show the code anyway, as if you're receiving a whole heap of results, staggering them into the UI or saving their process for tabs is incredibly useful. We will first need to create a context for our search using the search service create context method. With our context, we request the search service to get the results. We will asynchronously get those results over many frames. Now you could write your own enumerator for this, but we will just steal one from the documentation. Link in the description. And yes, I just praised the documentation. It doesn't happen very often. So whoever wrote this page, enjoy it probably until my next video. Now the last thing to do is fill in the enumeration action by taking the object from the search item and sending it to the viewer. And that's it. Both of these search service methods have comparable speeds to find assets, but with the interface coming up instantly. So you won't halt operations while searching, which any owner of a big project can tell you is super useful. And that's it. That's all that I have to give for now. Once again, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Unity, for stepping up again. Make sure to use the link in the description to check out the sale. Every time you buy, it helps support the channel and obviously helps feed that addiction that you seem to be forming or have formed for many, many years.